So here we are. Here is today's painting. I posted this on TikTok a couple days ago. Um, this is a fun little landscape. It's, I made it up. It's not based on a reference photo specifically, but it's a fun one to practice your reflections because we've got these distant reflections of the mountains here, these kind of mid-distance reflections of the trees, and then these really close-up reflections of the grass and the rocks. So it's not like the most realistic landscape, but it's a really good one to practice um, these three types of reflections. Um, so that's why it's a fun little landscape to do. So that's what we're gonna do. This will come back, so this is not the last time you're seeing it. I'm just gonna move it out of the way here. Uh, my watercolor paper is this Fluid 100 uh, Cold Press, 100% cotton watercolor paper. It is a watercolor block, which means there's 15 pages and they are bound together with glue on the long sides here. So this is all glue, and then these on the short sides, it's separate. So this means, whoa, so this just means it's uh, held down by that glue on the sides and then once I'm done with that pa this painting, I can take off the top page and then I have a new page underneath. Um, this is in my Amazon storefront. It's also at a, most art stores, so you can find it there if you're looking for this. It's a good watercolor paper. It's not too expensive either, which is nice, especially for 100% cotton watercolor paper. My paints here are Winsor & Newton. Uh, this is kind of a custom palette that Oh, surprised you with a professional watercolor. That's awesome. I really love these paints. Um, and so I wanted to show you just really quick because the situation kind of came up. So I kind of custom made this palette with the colors that I like personally. So you can buy each of these pants individually just based on the color. And what I do is when the pan starts to run out, I buy the uh, tube version of that color in the tube watercolor. And um, I just fill up the pans that are kind of running out of paint and you can let it dry and it'll just dry like a regular um, kind of dry watercolor and you can reactivate it with water later. So I like to do that. It's a little bit cheaper um, because these extruded pans are a little bit more expensive. They are a little bit more concentrated than the liquid watercolor, but I just find this to be more convenient. So that's what I do personally. And you can usually do that with most watercolor brands. Okay, and then my brushes are Princeton Neptune as usual. Um, these are my favorite watercolor brushes. They hold up forever and they are a little bit more expensive, but you'll never need to buy any brushes really again, maybe for like 10 years. So it's worth the investment in my opinion. Um, they've got lots of different sizes. I'm going to be using the oval wash, the half inch oval wash today, a full round. And then my detail brush is from a TikToker named Christy Rice. She's got a brush line and this detail brush is one of my favorites. What color is in the top right corner pan? That's white. Um, I really don't ever use it. It kind of came with the set, to be honest. Um, and I've just kept it in there because it keeps the lines balanced. Um, and I don't have another color to fill in on the top with the warm colors. So I just kind of keep it in there to keep the, the lines balanced because that's the kind of person I am. Okay, and then I've got my water, paper towels, um, all of that kind of stuff off to the side here. Uh, top left, oh, here, yeah. Top right corner pan is magenta. This one is white. Top left is white. Yeah, that's my, those are my left, lefts and rights. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. And then just my quick little spiel. First of all, uh, go ahead and use a brush and put a drop of water into each of your watercolor pans here. Um, regardless, if you're working with tube watercolor or dry watercolor in your pans here, it is just good to add some water a couple minutes before you start painting to each of these colors because it gets them uh, dissolved. So if you were to try and get paint out of there while they're um, while they're dry, you just won't get very much paint. So we always add some water and let it dissolve for a few minutes before we try and start painting. It just helps you get all the pigment out of there. So go ahead and do that. If you have a spray bottle, that works too. I just don't, you know, I don't need another thing in my studio. So I usually just use my brush with some water. Okay, and then my little spiel here while you're doing that and letting those dissolve. This is all just for fun. We are here to have fun and paint a landscape together. So try not to put too much pressure on yourself to make like a perfect landscape painting today. I hope you learn something. I hope you have fun. And um, I just, you know, I want those to be the goals. So think about that. And uh, please be nice to each other. Be nice to me in the comments and feel free to ask any questions that you have. I will try and get to all the questions that I see, but I do have to paint and talk at the same time, so sometimes I miss them. So if I've missed them, feel free to ask again in a couple minutes and I'll probably see it that time. Um, or if I've already answered a question, somebody wants to help people out in the comments who've, who are asking questions that I've already answered, that would be lovely as well. 
So let's go back to what we're painting today. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and paint this landscape. The kind of general idea of this landscape is that we are going to go from background to foreground. So the first thing we're gonna paint is the kind of graded wash in the background, it's pink, yellow, and blue. Then once that dries, we're gonna paint the mountains, then this mid distance kind of tree section, and then the rocks and stuff in the foreground. So we're gonna do all of those in kind of sections. If you have a hair dryer, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab it because it'll help with the drying of the first couple of layers, especially. Um, I do have a hair dryer in my studio, so I may use that if it doesn't dry in like a reasonable amount of time. If you don't have one, air drying is perfectly fine. You just might end up like a little bit behind um, because I do try and get you guys through this landscape in an hour. So uh, I'll give you, you know, if you wanna go grab that, go ahead and do that. And otherwise we are going to go ahead and get started with the background wash. So you also have time to grab your hair dryer after we do this background wash if you want, so you don't have to do it exactly right now. So the couple of, we're gonna mix up uh, three colors that we're gonna use for the background. And this will actually not really require much mixing. It's just gonna be the colors that you have in your palette. So the first color I'm gonna grab is a lizard and crimson. Sounds like lizard. It is a lizard and crimson. <laughs> and it's just this uh, cool toned uh, red, which means cool tone means it's closer to blue than it is to orange. Um, and so it's kind of almost magenta y. Um, and so we're going to get some of that on our palette here. Whatever red or pink that you have on your palette will work just fine. And we want to keep it pretty concentrated in the pa palette here. So I'm not adding a ton of water. I'm adding a little bit so that it flows around in the palette, but not a ton. We want this to be a pretty strong color to start out with. I'll get a piece of scratch paper here and I can swatch it for you. So pretty strong color. I wish I was home right now so I can paint along. Ah, so actually I forgot to mention this live, along with the other, all the other ones that I've done, are uploaded to my YouTube channel, uh, which is linked in my bio. So if you'd like to um, follow along with it later or check out the previous ones, you can go to my YouTube, you can subscribe. That would be lovely. Um, I officially got monetized on YouTube, which is good news. Um, but yeah, this live will be uploaded to YouTube later today. Okay, second color is going to be yellow. Whatever yellow you have is totally fine. Again, pretty concentrated on the palette. This is a cadmium yellow, but again, it doesn't matter. It's just kind of a regular yellow. <laughs> I'm here to like the live a billion times. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What are you painting? Missed the first part. Uh, we're painting a um, landscape. I will show it to you in just a second after we're done uh, mixing colors. Our last color is going to be blue. I'm going to use ultramarine blue. Whatever kind of sky blue you have is totally fine. Ultramarine blue is my favorite color. I use it in every painting. It is my most used color for sure. <laughs> and it's just my favorite. It's just such a pretty blue. Look at that, gorgeous. Okay, so those are the three colors. Not really much mixing, just whatever colors you have in your palette will work perfectly fine. Okay, so get those ready and make sure you've got enough to cover your um, paper, whatever size paper you're using, make sure you mix enough paint to cover it. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit more blue so I don't have to mix any while we're painting. So the general idea of the background here is that we do it all at once. So we're gonna do a wet on wet technique, which means we're gonna put down a layer of water first and then we're gonna put our colors in there and they're going to blend nicely because of the water on the paper. And that means I'm going to do a couple of steps kind of in quick succession here because I don't want the paper to dry before we can get to all those steps. So um, if you need to just watch me first and then you can do this, do the technique, that is totally fine. I will give you some a uh, few minutes afterwards to catch up. Uh, so we're going to start with a large brush. I might even switch to this uh, three quarter inch square brush just for this step here but whatever large brush you have will be fine. And I'm going to use the water from my cup and give the entire paper a nice thick layer of water. So, and um, just keep in mind that wherever you are, whatever the humidity is in your area, that will affect how quickly all of this dries and therefore how quickly you need to work. 
Um, I've got a little thermometer in here that says it's 35% humidity here right now, which is pretty rare for the Midwest. So I know I'm going to have to work pretty quickly on this um, because the water is going to start to dry and I can actually already see that happening more so than it usually does. So I'm going to make sure I give my paper like a really good layer of water here and then I'm going to try and work somewhat quickly so that I don't uh, have some weird textures because the paint starts to dry too early. Okay. So I'm tilting my head, making sure I've gotten the entire paper covered with water and kind of an even layer. And then I'm going to take my brush, start with the red that we mixed, put that in a stripe right in the center of the paper. And you can see that spread right out on the water on the paper, which is always very fun and very cool. So just a couple little horizontal lines there in the center and then move on. Don't worry about what it's looking like, just move on to your yellow. The yellow is going to go right underneath and right above the pink. So I'm just gonna continue using horizontal stripes, blend those two colors together gently. Grab some more yellow. Do that same thing on the top here. Oh, this is drying so fast, okay. Even go back and get some red, put that back in here. I just don't want you to overdo it here, so just kind of let it be what it be, <laughs> what it's gonna be. And, and then move on. Okay, once you've done that, switch over to your blue. And for the blue, you're gonna start at the very top and at the very bottom, and then go in horizontal stripes down to meet the yellow. And don't over mix the blue and the yellow because you will end up with green. Just kind of let them meet and then let them sit. And then I'll do the same thing from the bottom, going back up towards the yellow. Again, same thing, just kind of let them meet, but don't over mix that part. Okay. If you want, the last step would be to just um, add a little bit more blue at the very top and bottom, just to really get that gradient there. But if you feel like your colors are good and you want to just leave them alone, leave them alone. And I think we're going to leave that there. So don't worry about any like streaks or unevenness. You don't want to over mix this. Um, if it's still wet, you can do what I'm doing right now, which is gently tilting the paper in different directions. And this will kind of encourage a soft blend between those colors. But you don't want to over mix with your brush because you will, as it dries, just kind of end up with more streaks than you intend. Um, and you're going to end up hurting yourself more than, more than helping. Um, and so I'm just kind of tilting my paper back and forth. It's already starting to dry in the center there, so there's not really much I can do um, beyond this. So whatever it is, it's going to be, and the gradient will look better once we actually add the stuff on top. So let that dry. I'll see if we have any um, questions here that I've missed while you do that. Why not spray with water bottle? Um, so I see why not spray with water bottle or why not dip it in a bucket of water? <laughs> um, so you could certainly spray it. I would say that a spray bottle just gets less paint onto the paper than a brush does. Um, it's by nature meant to kind of mist your paper or mist whatever it's spraying. So I would say the brush is just more efficient because you can get more water onto the paper. A uh, bucket of water, I've seen some people do that or just like hold the paper under the sink. You can do that too. I just don't have a bucket of water in here. Um, and I find that the brush is a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Precise? I don't know. Those, I mean, those are options though. Some people do just soak their paper before they paint on it. What kind of canvas paper do you use with watercolors? You use watercolor paper. At any art store, there will be paper that is um, made specifically for watercolor and it's much thicker than regular paper. Is this video gonna be posted for later? Yes, it'll be on my YouTube channel. What kind of watercolors do you recommend? So I am using my uh, Windsor Newton watercolors here, but I have a whole Amazon storefront in my link tree. If you wanna see all of the different kind of watercolors that I've tried and would recommend at various price points. Um, so feel free to look at that as well. This is what we're painting today. 
we we're just letting this background here dry. Another interesting thing that I wanted to point out is the difference between these two papers. So these are both watercolor paper, um, but you can see that this, now it's not dry, so you have to wait till it dries to really make a good comparison, but I get much more texture oftentimes in this paper than I do on this one. I don't know why, that's just part of watercolor. <laughs> it's just part of kind of the art of it that you just end up with kind of different results um, and not really sure why but that's kind of is what it is. So that's just another thing that you can experiment with, with different paper and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, um, as we're, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the video will be available later. Um, thank you guys for helping me out in the comments as well. I do wanna do my little um, plugs here while we're waiting for this to dry and while you're catching up uh, as you're painting. So I, my name is Hannah. Hello, nice to meet you. I am a full-time artist. Uh, I do a lot of social media. It helps me out with my job, but my, you know, how I make my money is painting. Um, and so if you'd like to support me in any way, that would be wonderful because that is how I pay my rent. So if you were to go to my link tree, the one in my bio, you'll find uh, these five symbols as soon as you click on that link tree at the top there. The first one is the YouTube symbol. So if you want to get to my YouTube channel quickly, you can just click on that. It'll take you right to my channel. You can subscribe and uh, you can find all of the previous paint and sips there. Today's will be uploaded there as well. So if you want to check out my YouTube channel, go for that. Uh, my PayPal is this little dollar sign here. Uh, Linktree did take away the tip jar option, which I used for a long time. So if you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's uh, session, that is how you can do it. That'll just take you right to PayPal and you can leave me a little tip if you are so inclined. That is always super, super appreciated. Um, the next one is my email. If you need to email me, TikTok, Instagram. Then if you scroll down in my link tree, you'll find uh, my watercolor book. Let me get that real quick so you can see. So I do have a watercolor book out, which is very exciting. It came out in April. It's called Watercolor Wonderlust. I know a lot of people who usually join these lives have gotten this book already, which I very much appreciate. Um, this has 24 landscape painting uh, lessons in it, which are very similar to these paint and sip sessions. So if you'd like to work through these kind of at your own pace, there's a lot of awesome information in here and just kind of techniques for painting your own landscape paintings. So if, uh, in my link tree, this will be the first link and it'll take you to all of your options for buying this book. It's also available anywhere you buy books. So you can check that out there. I would very much appreciate it. This would also make a great gift for the holidays for anybody in your life that wants to um, learn how to paint. It's great for beginners or even more advanced artists. I tried to make it applicable to both. So make sure you check that out. That would mean a lot to me. I've also got my Etsy shop in my link tree as well. So if you want to check out the paintings that I make uh, to sell, that would be lovely as well. Um, I make bookmarks, postcards, prints, original paintings, uh, stickers, all of that stuff. And there's some uh, great stuff in there at different price points as well. So you don't have to spend a ton of money to own some original art, which I really wanted to make a priority. Uh, and I think the last thing I'll mention in my link tree is my Patreon. So if you'd like to support me on a monthly basis, um, you can do that via Patreon. And for $3.50, so a 2008 cup of coffee, you can um, support me monthly and you'll get a tutorial just like this one that we're doing today every month that only you have access to. Uh, if you do the higher tiers, you also get some art uh, every month. So if you want to support me in a monthly fashion, that would be lovely too. So overall, just check out that link tree if you want to support me, pick out what kind of speaks to you, and it means a lot to me, however you choose to support me. And if you can't support me in a monetary way yet, just following, liking, watching my videos on YouTube especially, I just got monetized there, haha, <laughs> um, that all helps as well. So thank you for listening to all of that. Uh, I appreciate however you choose to support me, and um, it's always very nice to hear from you guys on these pain sip days. Uh, would you consider doing digital downloads of your prints? That I, so I've thought about that, but I get a little nervous that people would take advantage of that or I know a lot of people do it, but I just don't want people to be like making and selling prints of my work if I give them a digital copy of my art. Um, and so that's just something I've kind of thought about and I'm just not sure about it. So um, I wouldn't say that's in the works right now, but I appreciate you asking. Any other questions before we move on? How's everybody doing? How's this going for everybody? Let me know if you're painting with me. Play some pit bull, okay.
Ready? I'm not blending like you. Uh, well, mine didn't blend all that well either, to be honest. So don't, don't worry about it too much. It'll look more regular once we add everything on top. Love your paintings, you're awesome. Thank you so much, you're so sweet. Um, so I just wanted to show you close up. I do have some like blooms here. Um, and this part didn't really blend all that well. So we're gonna cover that up later, it's gonna be fine. But I just wanted to show you, it's not perfect for me either. Um, and that is something that we're gonna talk about later of like covering up some of our mistakes. <laughs> um, so we'll go into that. Why does the blue look more grainy than the yellow and red? You know, I was talking about that just a couple minutes ago. I'm not exactly sure because on this paper, it is really smooth and you can kind of see the difference there between those blues. I don't know why, it just kind of happens <laughs> that way. Um, yeah, my lines don't blend, look streaky. So the, the streakiness can come from not putting enough water on the paper to begin with. Um, it can also just come from overworking it. Um, and so that's just kind of something that you have to practice, unfortunately. Um, I wish I had like a quick fix for you, but it's just kind of something that over time you'll get more used to it and it'll kind of get better <laughs> as you go. All right, let's mix up our next colors here. We're going to paint in the mountains in the distance. Mine has already entered the ugly face. Exactly, yep. <laughs> All paintings get into the ugly face. Uh, so we're gonna mix up uh, two different purple colors for these mountains here. And we're just gonna do kind of muted purple colors. So let's do magenta. and blue to make purple and then i'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna which is kind of an orange color and that's just going to dull down the purple it's kind of an opposite color on the color wheel and it just makes it look more of a natural purple so i'm just adding a touch of that at a time kind of mixing together those three colors until i get a purple that i'm happy with here okay I think I quite like it. I want this to lean a little bit more blue for me personally, so I think I quite like that. And I'm gonna keep this one pretty concentrated here. So I didn't add a ton of water. Oh. So that's what that looks like, fairly dark. And then I'm going to fill up my brush with this color, get some on my brush, move it over to a different pan, and then add some water to it. And that way we get the same color, just watered down. So we get two for the price of one. There we go. So there's that lighter version. The three colors were uh, magenta, ultramarine blue, and a burnt sienna. My ultramarine blue does the same thing. Yeah, I'm just not sure what uh, why it does that. I have a couple blooms I'm not in love with. Yeah, we're gonna cover those up later. <laughs> and sometimes that just kind of happens, but I promise it'll be less noticeable once we finish the painting. Okay, so once you're done mixing up those purples, uh, you can do one of two things to get this, sorry for the car outside. You can do one of two things to get this horizon line. You can either just kind of freehand it, um, use a, you could use a ruler to draw a pencil line uh, across the way, or you can use a piece of tape and use that as your horizon line. So I will let you choose your own adventure on that. Eventually, you'll just need to find your way to a straight horizon line-ish. So I like to just put down a piece of tape because then it, I don't need to worry about it. Make sure your painting is dry before you're doing this. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to use a hairdryer on that later. Uh, ooh, okay, hopefully that turns out okay. So make sure you trust your tape before you put it down in the middle of your painting. Okay, so once you've got your horizon line, start with that watered down purple, so the lighter purple. And we're just gonna make a mountain range here in the distance. Let's make sure you can see that. So I'm using a, a large brush still, and I'm just gonna create a little mountain range. Make sure you make it a little bit interesting, so don't just make, don't just make triangles. Kinda move your brush, shake your hand a little bit, and it'll turn into a nice realistic mountain range there. Okay, so go ahead and let that dry all the way, and then we're gonna add another one in front uh, of that with the darker purple. So just let, let this dry first. What paper do you use? This is a uh, Fluid, the brand is Fluid 100 cotton watercolor paper. Okay. 
Any other questions right now before we keep going? Do you use a dryer? I do sometimes. When I'm painting by myself, I often use a hair dryer. It is not very humid here right now, so um, I haven't really felt the need to yet, but if this takes a little longer to dry, then I will. Um, and I do often when I'm just painting by myself. How often do you do these videos? Every other week I've been doing these videos, same time, same day, Saturdays at 3 p.m. And paint and sip number 100, the today's is 99. Uh, paint and sip number 100 is going to be September 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, so that's two weekends from now. Um, I would love for you all to join me, so feel free to mark that on your calendars now. That's not gonna change, uh, barring some sort of uh, unfortunate situation. Paint and sip number 100 is gonna be in two weekends, September 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Would love to see you all there. Uh, let's see, how often do you do cold press paper? Yes, it is cold press. How long have you been painting? I've been painting since I was a child. Um, just have always loved it. Does your paper have to dry before you add the horizon? Uh, yes, yeah, the background should be dry before you add everything that we've done so far. Why didn't you wash the brushes between color grabs? Uh, because watercolor paint is just kind of very forgiving that way. Um, I can show you. So like my orange has a little bit of gunk in it, you can see there, but if I take a damp brush, um, I can get all of that out and it turns into the same color. The paint is so concentrated that just having a little bit of other colors won't really affect it. I try to be careful with like my yellows, but other colors, I don't really, doesn't really matter. Um, so I just don't care. <laughs> Never put the horizon in the center, it's boring. Uh, yeah, it can be sometimes. Um, I just wanted to, you know, we're working on reflections for this painting here and we kind of have a different, so we've got kind of two horizons here. Yes, this is the true horizon, but we've got this one here as well, uh, which is the kind of trees in the mid distance here. So I kind of think the combo of those two helps with the not having this directly in the middle, you know. It's also just kind of a practice landscape, so I don't really care where it is. Do you paint as a job? Yes, I do. I am a full-time artist. Are your products listed in your bio? Uh, yes, all of my um, recommended art supplies are in my Amazon storefront in my link tree. And sip, what does that mean? It just means you can sip on whatever you want to drink. <laughs> I think my horizon is too low. No, there's no such thing. It is totally fine wherever you put it. Um, I just put it in the center to make it easy, but it really doesn't matter where you ended up putting it. Are you happy with your job? How's the income? That's a good question because the answer is I'm incredibly happy. Um, I was working a corporate job before I went full-time a couple years ago and just kind of had a lot of, I had like a PhD in front of me, like was not really looking forward to that. And I wake up every morning like so happy with what I get to do for a living. Um, and so that's kind of the main thing. Like I'm ridiculously happy with my life, which is a really cool thing to say. Um, but the income is a stressful part. Like I make enough, I can pay my bills um, thanks to lovely people like you. However, I do have times where it is stressful because I don't have a regular paycheck that comes in. So it's hard to plan for things. Um, it's hard to, it's just hard to kind of stay stress-free, especially for an anxious girly like me. Um, and so, you know, that kind of stuff, you just have to be able to kind of take. And I am better at it at, on some days than others. You know, when things are going well, I'm like, oh, this is great. Like this is, I, why was I ever worried? But then when it's going bad, I'm like, I'm gonna be homeless. So there's, you know, we go through a lot of emotions there, but I honestly wouldn't trade it. Uh, and I am just very happy with what I'm doing. So that's kind of the, the final answer. Okay, while I keep answering questions, we're gonna add our second layer of mountains here. This is dry, so I'm gonna add the second layer with the darker purple. Same technique, just right in front of the mountains that we just did. Just kind of changing up the horizon line, or changing up the elevation a little bit. Making it a different thing. There we go. And we'll let that dry. You can take off the tape as soon as you're done painting. The paint will not go into the um, place that you taped off um, while it's still wet. 
Okay, I'm gonna hair dry this just to take off the tape uh, because I'm nervous that it's gonna rip my paper. So I apologize for the hair dryer noises. Sometimes you, uh, TikTok blocks it out so you shouldn't be able to hear it, but I'm just gonna do that real quick. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. That's so sad. I shouldn't have done that. I'm still getting used to this. Um, I'm still getting used to this paper. Okay, lesson learned, uh, don't use the tape on this paper. We're gonna still fix it because I do wanna show you um, like how I would go about fixing this. Um, so this will be a good learning lesson. It's not gonna turn out that well for me, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do to fix this is uh, use some damp, just a, a damp brush, clean damp brush and go over the ripped paper here. Um, I don't care about the texture that comes up when I'm doing this. It just is about smoothing down the ripped paper. So I'm just using a clean damp brush and I'm just kind of scrubbing over what we just did, <laughs> the mistakes that were made. Um, and this just kind of, for me, helps to smooth down that paper that just got ripped up and then it's a little easier to paint over later. So again, I'm just kind of using a damp brush, scrubbing over what just got ripped off. <sighs> That's so frustrating. I hate when that happens. Okay, note to self, don't use tape on this paper. You can also use like a, a finger to kind of press down the ripped areas. Okay, we're gonna see how this turns out after we go over it. It might just give us some cool texture. We're gonna find out. Okay, so once you have completely ripped up your paper. Um, we are going to do the distant reflections. I'm just gonna dry this all the way. So, the thing about reflections that I wanted to teach you today is that they get more and more detailed as you get closer to the bottom of the page. This is the foreground, this is what's closest to us as the viewer, this is the background, this is what's furthest away from us. So you can see that these reflections are just kind of streaks in the water. These are a little bit more defined, some streaks, but some kind of lines, and then these are all just lines that kind of directly reflect the objects above it. So for the distance, we use a technique called dry brushing, which I have talked about um, before. Uh, the paint bled under the tape, that is totally fine. We're about to cover it up. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Mm, actually, yeah, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. And same purple color that we just used. I'm gonna start with the light version, so the watered down version. And I'm gonna load that up on my brush. And then I'm going to tap my brush onto a paper towel to remove a lot of the paint. So there's still some on there, but a lot of it's been removed. And then if I hold my brush almost parallel to the paper and scrape it along the paper, you get this texture, which is called a dry brushing texture. So it's kind of a misnomer because your brush is still wet, but it's just drier than it normally would be. And you get this kind of texture as the paint breaks over the paper. So we're going to do that underneath the mountains here. So I took off most of the paint onto a paper towel, holding my brush almost horizontal and scraping my brush along the paper. Now I'm gonna have to use a little bit more paint because I am going over this part that I've ripped. So I'm gonna use a little bit more paint as I'm going over those parts. But then we're just going to use that dry brushing technique
as we work our way down. So you don't want to go too far down, just kind of same amount of uh, however far up your mountains go, that's how far down they should go. A nice like reflection mirror image. Oh boy. Yeah, that's not going to turn out very well, is it? Okay, well, it is what it is. Hopefully you can still learn from this. I'm trying to think of what else I could do for that. Maybe I could just fill it in with some darker color. So we've just got these kind of loose streaks reflecting loosely our mountains here. And then we can go into, you don't even need to wait for it to dry. You can just go into that darker purple and add the same thing kind of on top. Maybe it'll just kind of look like some interesting textures in the distance. <laughs> uh. Just trying to blend this um, these areas in just kind of as best I can with what's around it but because it's been ripped um, it'll hold paint differently than the paper that's around it so that's why I'm getting the different kind of textures there we'll see how else we can cover that up later as well okay so I'm gonna let that dry Use acrylic dark purple to make mountains where the ripped part is. Um, unfortunately, I think, yeah, move the trees to that side. So yeah, what I was thinking of was gonna was covering up most of this with trees. <laughs> um, probably up until like, yeah, I might do the trees on the other side and just make them until like there. Kind of cover up that whole thing. But then you're kind of covering up a lot of the mountains. So we're gonna figure it out. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's fine. Okay, just making sure we don't have any other comments, questions, concerns. It's okay. It happens. It happens plenty of times. <laughs> I've, I make, um, you know, I make mistakes all the time. It's part of art. And it's something I actually stress a lot to people in these paint and sip sessions, which is that you don't really like learn anything unless you make mistakes. So um, always good to finish the painting. And even if it's not your favorite, that's okay. You're gonna continue to make bad paintings as long as you're an artist or not bad paintings, but just like paintings you're not as happy with um, as long as you continue painting. I still do it. Most every artist you've ever known does it. So it's totally fine. And you just kind of learn from it for the next time. doing two at the same time same paper as you one ripped one didn't okay great <laughs> sounds like it's mostly random even more helpful that this problem occurred because you I appreciate you tried to correct it yeah well I actually like the texture where it ripped it looks cool cool awesome sometimes it turns out well okay let's go ahead and move on so that we don't uh, keep you here for too long we're gonna make a very very dark green color so we're going to mix together sap green ultramarine blue and Van Dyke Brown. So the combo of green, blue, and brown is my favorite for making a very dark green that is still saturated. So it's still got lots of colors in it. Um, I don't like to mix black. I don't really use black in my watercolor paintings. Um, I prefer to just mix dark colors. My darkest color on my palette is Payne's gray, which is kind of a cool gray, dark, cool gray. And then I'm not adding a ton of water into this either. So it's pretty thick paint here. And then when I put that on the palette, you can see, or on the paper, you can see that it looks, it almost looks black on the camera screen, but I can tell in real life it's dark blue. I'm just being relatable, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> okay. So wherever you wanna put your trees, you are just going to create a new horizon line, not with tape this time. <laughs> Mine is gonna go, oh, but I wanted to cover that up too. We're gonna to do something else to cover that up. Um, I'm gonna go right here and just create kind of a general 
straight across. Our horizon line doesn't need to be perfectly straight this time. There's my horizon line. And then I'm just gonna start dotting this paint up into kind of a these little short tree shapes. And it's just gonna increase in height as I go over towards the side of the painting here. So I'm just kind of swirling my brush, creating these little dots um, to look like the silhouettes of trees. And then I can fill in with a flat wash everything underneath that. Okay. What was the second color mix to make that color? It was green, blue, and brown. I used sap green, ultramarine blue, and Van Dyke brown, but whatever green, blue, and brown you have is totally fine. Okay, so once you've done that, that's kind of the base of this section. Then we're gonna add some evergreen trees on top, which is my favorite thing to paint. Um, so I'm gonna use my small brush, my little detail brush here, and I will zoom you in so that you can see. Oh, why is it so yellow in here? <laughs> <laughs> some weird colors showing up on the screen. Um, I'm going to use my detail brush and just create some evergreen trees. So I'm going to start with a vertical line and then just kind of go back and forth in like a zigzag motion, adding branches that get longer as you work your way down. and they're just gonna blend into what you've painted already. Now you can add as many of these as you want. Uh, I'm going to add a few so that I can cover up my uh, sins. <laughs> um, you can also just do like deciduous trees here. You can just fill it in with this kind of texture, the round um, kind of dotted texture there. And these just take a little bit of practice, so don't worry about getting them perfect the first time if you've never painted them before. Um, just kind of zigzagging back and forth, adding the branches. The faster you do it, the more realistic it'll look oftentimes. And then here I think I'm going to start adding some taller ones. So as I get over towards the right side of the paper, I'm just going to increase these guys in height. Because that will draw the eye towards the center of the paper. And feel free to add as many or as few of these as you want as well. It is your painting. You're allowed to do with it what you want. Maybe I'll do one here. Do a short one in between those two. You make it look easy. <laughs> I've, I've done it a lot, that's why. Um, and that's just the kind of the secret to painting and really anything in life, I think. Okay, I'm feeling better because these are kind of covering up the worst of the, of the rips, so that's probably good. How do you get the sky not to be splotchy? That part takes practice as well. Um, the, I think the keys are using a large brush, uh, putting plenty of water on the paper before you start because we did that wet on wet technique. Um, so you wanna make sure you start with a ton of water on the paper, uh, not overworking it. So not trying to like blend it out too much um, because that's that will give you streaks, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, and working quickly, I would say those are kind of the keys uh, so that the, the water on the paper doesn't dry before you're done. So those are kind of things that you can practice or just kind of experiment with is the amount of water and, and then work on practicing kind of doing it quickly. I love your trees. Thank you so much. I love trees. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to mix up just more of that color because I'm running out. So same color, just make sure you have enough of it because we're gonna paint the reflection with the same color. Okay. I 
watercolor paint and I'm too nervous to do demos. Kudos, you're explaining it so well. Well, thank you. It is my 99th one. <laughs> so I certainly was nervous for the first, I would say probably 30 or 40. Um, and I have just done it so many times now that I'm no longer nervous. Plus you guys are always so sweet, which I really appreciate. Um, but it just takes practice like anything else. What size is that detail brush? I think it's a two round. Uh, yeah, it's a two round. Okay, so with the reflection here, we're gonna do a combo of that dry brushing technique and a little bit more detail work. So I'm gonna get that uh, green color that we just used for the trees onto my four round here, take a little bit of paint off, and then I'm going to use the side of my brush, like we said before, and just start adding some streaks. And I'm going to do this um, kind of as a mirror image of what we first painted, which is this kind of the fluffy kind of base that we painted. So I'm just gonna reflect that shape into the water here with my dry brushing. Whenever you're doing reflections, it is a mirror image of what's above. So if you just take it and flip it, that's what you should be painting. So I'm gonna do that, leave a few streaks or leave a few spots where you can see the color underneath kind of show through. You can use uh, the tip of the brush and add some uh, horizontal streaks in there too, just to kind of mix up the textures. Okay. And then you're gonna find where those evergreen trees are and just kind of make a squiggly reflection of those trees. So I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth, horizontal strokes, and just make kind of a squiggly reflection of those trees there. So there's that one. I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush so I have a little bit more control. So then I have one there, so I'm gonna go right here. And I've got a bigger one here. squiggly triangle shapes that I'm doing underneath these trees here. Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> Hopefully you're still with me. Everybody's concentrating. <laughs> Squiggling is fun. <laughs> Lots of squiggles. some dry brushing in between there. <clears throat> My reflection is looking better than the trees, nice. Happens sometimes. Sipping, not doing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fair enough. Saturday.
Okay, and then pretty soon here, I need to stop messing with it so that I don't uh, overdo it. But we love overdoing it around here. <laughs> So I'm just trying to actually add imperfections here. Um, so I don't want like perfect triangles underneath these trees. I want some little streaks that kind of go outside of those shapes. Um, I think that looks more natural and I'm trying to add a little dry brushing texture uh, in between there as well, just to kind of explain what I'm doing. So I think I'm gonna leave that there. Don't wanna overdo it. Um, and I think we will go ahead, since it's 3.55, just so that I can get all of you guys done with everything. Um, I have the imperfections sound good, <laughs> me too. Um, just so we can kind of talk through everything, we can leave the reflections where they are because you can always go back and, and work on those later. Um, and we will just kind of move on to our last step, which is going to be adding the rocks and the grass in the foreground here. So uh, we're gonna mix up like a really dark brown for the rocks and a regular green for the grass. So I'll probably just go right here, just add a little bit more green back to this and it'll be lighter. Add some brown, add some blue, and just water it down. So same color that we used for the trees here, just watered down. And you'll get a nice green color. Still want it to be pretty dark. We don't want it to be um, a bright green. And then I'm gonna do a dark brown. So I'm gonna mix together brown and blue. More brown than blue. A nice dark brown. There you go. There's our colors. I'm an oil painter, but I admire respect watercolor artists. I need to practice this medium. I do both, actually. Um, I do oil painting as well. They are certainly different, uh, and I really can't do them on the same day because they just use two different parts of the brain. Um, but they're both fun in their own ways. Okay, so for the rocks, we're just going to start adding some rocks. Um, rocks can look really any way that you want them to, so don't feel like they need to, to uh, look a certain way. I just like to create kind of an interesting outline and then a relatively straight um, line where they meet the water. And it's going to look weird your first couple of rocks that you put in, but I promise if you put in more, it'll look more normal. <laughs> Okay, so then once I have the rock, then I recreate the shape in horizontal lines, in just kind of general horizontal lines, underneath. Leaving a few little streaks and stuff where the blue can show through. Like that. So you can do big ones, small ones. I like a mixture of both. So maybe I'll do like a little small one here. Maybe a couple little small ones kind of sitting together. And then you just recreate the shape with the horizontal lines underneath. I like to leave a little bit of blue right where the rock meets the water to kind of show where that is. Maybe I've got like a, a flat rock sitting out here. reflection will just be really short. And then you can also add some rocks that are just kind of at the bottom of the page. Those won't have a reflection, but they'll just kind of continue the painting onto the edge of the paper. I can do rocks, yeah. Rocks can be nice and forgiving because there's a lot of different shapes of rocks. And 
it is watercolor. And while we're painting rocks, I will just do my spiel one more time since we've got everybody here. Um, this is my full-time job, believe it or not, <laughs> which you may not believe after today's session. Uh, I am a full-time artist and uh, I rely on lovely people like you to be able to pay my rent and all of that good stuff. So if you'd like to support me in any way, um, you want to click on my link tree in my bio and that is where you'll find all of my information, including uh, the symbols at the very top will be my YouTube, my PayPal, if you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's session, always appreciated. Um, and then if you scroll down, you'll find my Etsy shop, you'll find my watercolor book, Watercolor Wonderlust, if you want to work through some landscape tutorials like this one um, on your own, at your own pace, you can do that with my book. Uh, you'll find my Etsy shop where I sell all of my artwork, um, always fun to check that out. And you'll find like my Amazon storefront with all of my art supply recommendations and uh, my Patreon if you'd like to support me monthly. So you'll find all of that stuff in my link tree and whatever you, whatever kind of speaks to you, whatever sparks joy, feel free to click on it and check it out. Um, and however you choose to support me is super appreciated. I see a face in the rock. Nice. <laughs> People comment that quite often. I'm, uh, you guys are so creative seeing all of that stuff. Oh, if you stick around, I'll show you one my boyfriend pointed out to me <laughs> on a painting that I did a long time ago that he was concerned about because he thought it was actually like a face or like a demon in my, <laughs> in my painting. Love to get the book. Thank you so much. This has been a bunch of fun. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm glad you've had fun. Okay, so continuing to add my rocks, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and switch over to adding grass so that I can show you that as well. Feel free to keep adding rocks um, to your heart's desire. Uh, honestly, I feel like the more you add, the better it looks for this specific um, element. Okay, but I'm going to leave some room for the grass, and I'm just going to use the same brush, go over to my green color. And the key to adding the grass, I like to do this in clumps. So I like to just kind of Flick my brush, add some grass blades here, crossing over each other, going in different directions. Maybe there's a broken one or two in there. And then once I've done a few, I'm just going to copy those shapes in squiggly lines. So I'm not going to copy all of them because there's a, it's a big clump, but I'm just going to copy a few of them and then sort of add some little squiggles. So more squiggles. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> and it'll, you know, look like a reflection there. Today has been a challenge. Good. I'm glad it's been a challenge because uh, it's always good to, that means you've hopefully learned something um, and it's always good to challenge yourself. Um, it's been a challenge for me too, so don't feel like <laughs> you're the only one struggling. Uh, and then you can also add just like blades of grass kind of by themselves or just with two or three blades of grass like that. And again, just kind of add the squiggles underneath. Don't get fooled by the way that these grass blades should go. They should always reflect. So that means if this blade of grass is curving to the right, the reflection needs to curve to the right as well. Next live, I'll be, I'll be ready. Perfect. <laughs> Our next live is the 100th live. So I would love all of you to join. It's going to be a fun one. make this time for me. Absolutely. That's all I want for you guys is to have some time to practice painting and to just kind of take some time for yourself. That's my biggest goal for these paint sip sessions. So I hope that, uh, I hope you're able to make that happen.
So again, feel free to just add however much grass and rocks and all of that kind of stuff you want in the foreground. I would make sure, I would try to keep um, everything kind of relatively close to the bottom of the page. Uh, you don't want to keep this moving all the way up to like here because that's too far away. So try and keep all of this concentrated towards the bottom of the page if you haven't already. I have some grass kind of poking out of this rock here. You can also add little like cattails or like little, uh, I don't know, flowers on the ends of these things just by doing some dots on the ends of the grass. Don't forget about the edges. Okay, and then last little detail I wanna show you is if you take a little bit of whatever blue you used for the sky and the, and the water, so that for me is ultramarine blue, but whatever blue you used, Take a little bit of that pretty watered down on your detail brush. And for the grass in particular, it can sometimes be helpful to mark kind of the where the grass meets the water. So I'm just using a little horizontal line with that watered down blue. And it's gonna be really subtle, um, but it's gonna just kind of help with that reflection. So I'm just putting a little streak in there like that, like a shadow almost. I feel like it just helps with the the overall illusion of the reflection there. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I had for you, and it is 90 degrees in the studio right now, so I am ready to be done. <laughs> um, here is the final painting. Here's a look at it. I am definitely going to sign it at the bottom there. Um, I will show you how we get it off of the watercolor block. So as I talked about in the beginning, the paper is bound on, with glue on the long sides and not on the short sides. There will always be a section at least of non-glued paper on these watercolor blocks. And I just use a palette knife, but you could use a butter knife, slide it in there, and then use that to gently uh, break the glue on the sides here. And then I usually do end up with a little bit of glue on the paper, on the edges of the paper there. And so I just uh, take an X-Acto knife and cut that off once we're off of the live here. So there is our painting for today. Again, not my best because of the ripped paper, but that's okay, that happens. And I hope you enjoyed seeing me mess up <laughs> and, uh, and seeing me try and fix it. Uh, it happens and it's totally fine. And. Uh, you know, it's just part of painting and we will learn for next time. So again, I really appreciate everybody being here. This is always so fun to paint with you guys and I hope you enjoyed, uh, hope you learned something as well. And remember that in two weekends, so September 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be paint and sip number 100, which is kind of a cool landmark. Uh, so if you'd like to join me again, please do uh, join me on September 28th, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I will be here. Hope you paint with along with me. Uh, and then if you do want to support me, again, make sure you check out my link tree. First tab will be, the first little symbol in there will be YouTube. Uh, so you can check out my YouTube channel. This live will be uploaded later today. If you want to leave me a tip or a gift for today's session, that'll be super helpful. That is PayPal. You can click on that little dollar sign and you can do that there. Email, TikTok, Instagram, if you want to uh, check out any of those things. Uh, Watercolor Wonderlust, my book, is available in the first kind of link in the link tree if you'd like to check out my watercolor book. I've also got my Etsy shop, my Patreon, my um, Amazon storefront with all of my watercolor uh, art supplies, all of that kind of stuff. That's all in my link tree as well, so just make sure you check that out. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun.